There are two types of name server records, authoritative and referral. An authoritative name server record authorizes a name server to resolve queries. A referral name server record diverts queries to the authoritative name server. Each authoritative name server needs both types of name server records. It requires an authoritative name server record in the domain zone file for which it resolves queries and a referral name server record in the parent domain zone file that forwards queries to this domain. Resolver systems can access an authoritative name server through referral name servers. DNS system organizes authoritative name servers in a hierarchy. Each authoritative name server resolves queries for its domain and provides a referral for the child domain. When an authoritative name server receives a query, it checks whether the query belongs to it or its child domain. If the query does not belong to it or its child, it returns an error indicating the requested host or service is not available. If the query belongs to it, it resolves the query. If the query belongs to its child domain, it provides a referral to the child domain's name server. It only provides referrals for its child domains. It knows nothing about its grandchild domains. If its child domain has child domains, the child domain will be responsible for providing referrals to its child domains. We need to create authoritative name server records in the domain's zone file. For example, if we want to create name server records for the example domain, we need to add authoritative name server records in the example domain's zone file. The name server record uses the following syntax. This field defines the maximum time resolver systems can cache this record. If we leave this field blank, DNS uses the default value of the TTL directive. This field defines the class type. This field defines the record type. The domain name field defines the domain for which it configures the authorized name server. If we leave this field empty, DNS uses the previous record's name field's value in this field. Usually, NS records are placed just after the start of authority record. Therefore, if we keep this field empty, DNS picks the start of authority record's name field's value as the default value for this field. In the start of authority record, administrators usually use a single at sign in the name field. DNS replaces the at sign with the value of the origin directive. With this setup, the start of authority record automatically receives the domain name from the origin directive, and NS records receive it from the start of authority record. In our example, we configure the domain name example.com in the origin directive. From this directive, DNS will automatically configure the domain name field of the start of authority record and NS records. The authorized name server field defines the authorized name server for the domain we configure in the domain name field. This record configures the name server ns1.example.com as the authoritative name server for the domain example.com. If the authoritative name server is available within the domain, we also need to create a host record for it. A host record maps a service or a host to an IP address. As I mentioned earlier, a resolver system can access a name server only from its parent domain. Because of this, we need to create an NS record for each name server in its parent domain zone file. An NS record that we create in the parent domain zone file is known as a referral name server record or a glue name server record. It sticks the child domain's name servers with the parent domain's name server. It uses the same syntax the authoritative name server record uses. The only difference between a referral or glue name server's record and an authoritative name server's record is that in the referral name server record, we use the domain name for which we are creating the referral in the domain name field. For example, if we want to create a referral name server record for the XYZ domain, we will use the XYZ domain's fully qualified domain name here. Since the referred domain is a child domain of this domain, we must have to create a host record for it also. If we create a glue record without the host record for the child domain's name server, the resolver systems cannot access the child domain's name server. Let us take an example to understand it. A resolver system wants to resolve the name ftp.xyz.example.com. By default, resolver systems only know the IP addresses of root name servers. They save them statically in library files. For example, Linux saves root name server's IP addresses in the slash var slash name slash name.ca file. The resolver system sends the query to the nearest root name server. The root name server provides a referral to the com name server. The referral includes the com name server's IP address. From the referral, the resolver system learns the com name server's IP address and sends the same query to the com name server. The com name server provides a referral to the example name server. The referral includes the example name server's IP address. From the referral, 
the resolver system learns the example name server's IP address and sends the same query to the example name server. The example name server provides a referral to the XYZ name server. Since the query belongs to the XYZ name server, it resolves the query. Now, let us suppose the administrator forgets to add the IP address in the glue record of xyz.example.com in the zone file of example.com. In this situation, the example name server will provide a referral to the XYZ name server without its IP address. Since the resolver system does not know the IP address of the XYZ name server, it has to resolve this name first. To resolve this name, it follows the same steps. Since the resolver system can get the XYZ name server's IP address only from the example name server and the example name server does not provide it, the resolver system will keep repeating this process. It creates an infinite loop of queries between the resolver system and the example name server. To avoid this situation, you should always add a host record for the referral name server in the parent domain name server's zone file. DNS is an essential service. You should configure at least two name servers for each domain. You should configure the primary name server within the domain. You should configure the secondary name server outside the domain in a different geographical location. This setup allows resolver systems to access resources even if the primary name server fails. We use the same syntax to add an NS record for the backup name server. If the backup name server is available within the domain, we also need to add a host record for it. If the backup name server is available outside the domain, we do not need to add a host record for that. As mentioned earlier, in a DNS system, only authoritative name servers can resolve queries. Because of this, we also need to configure the backup name server as the authoritative name server for the domain. If we do not do this, a situation called lame delegation occurs. A lame delegation occurs when an NS record points to a name server that is not authorized to answer for the domain. In this example, we configured a backup name server, ns1.example.net. We need to configure this name server as the authoritative name server for the domain example.com. To authorize this name server for the example domain, we need to configure this name server as the slave name server for this domain. A name server can act as a primary name server for one domain and a backup name server for another domain at the same time. This flexibility allows administrators to use existing name servers to configure backup name servers for other name servers. Let's take an example. Suppose we have two primary name servers ns1.example.com and ns1.example.net for the domains example.com and example.net. We can configure the ns1.example.com name server as the backup name server for the ns1.example.net name server and the ns1.example.net name server as the backup name server for the ns1.example.com name server. This setup allows us to configure backup name servers without adding any additional name servers to the network. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them with us in the comment section given below.